So I found this piece on Marketplace for free 99. Um, I thought it was lovely. It's actually in excellent condition with the exception of the shredded top. Don't worry, I know you're concerned, but we'll change it. It'll look great. So to start this off, it does need quite the cleaning, but no repairs, so that's pretty awesome. Um, it's a pretty old piece. It has the really terrible screws in it. But, um, so initially I used this little screwdriver here, but I finally found a small enough bit on my power drill to be able to put it back together. So that was cool. Um, it did have a little chain that was actually just attached with like a tiny brad nail. So I just took out that and just on the top and just left it on the inside. Then of course I store everything in my tiny little bucket as I go. Um, I'm using liquid sandpaper because it's a degreaser and you don't have to wash it off, which is one of my favorite parts about it. This piece wasn't terribly shiny, so I wasn't worried about using it for that regard, but um, I do like using the liquid sandpaper with a slight abrasive, so I just have like a little scuff pad that I'm using to clean the piece with. It was very dirty. Um, and then as you could see, it had quite a bit of cobweb stuck on the bottom, which is fun. Thankfully, nothing alive in there. Why are cobwebs so hard to get off too? I feel like they're just, uh, they just don't want to let go. So as I was cleaning it, I realized that some of the finish was trying to come off. So I'm just taking a sanding sponge and just hitting it really quickly to make sure that I'm going to have a really good secure surface to lay my paint on. At this point, I have no idea what I'm going to do with this. So it's a journey. Um, I know that I'm going to take the legs off because I want to paint them apart from the piece because it'll just give me a cleaner finish on the bottom. These ones were hard to take out as well because they were kind of bent and I wanted to keep the original um, everything. They were good screws, they were just a little bent, so I bent them back and they went in just fine. So here's a fun thing. This is joint compound. I'm just mixing up a bit of it and then I dump in a little bit of my... Um, paint to tint it just a smidge uh, and this stuff is going to give you some really really great texture so um, it's super cheap super inexpensive I got mine at Home Depot I want to say it's like less than five dollars and it lasts for days so I didn't want a stark white underneath because it is pretty white so I added just a touch of my um, Chalk Mountain Iron Gate and mixing it together, it shows up darker always, so just keep that in mind if you want it to peek through anything. Um, it dries quite a bit lighter. So I'm using a chip brush here, and I'm just going every which way to add quite a bit of texture all over the entire piece. You can do this to your heart's desire. Whatever you like, throw it on there. Um, but you do want to use a chip brush or something that you don't care about because you'll most likely end up throwing it in the garbage. Okay, so quickly we are going to go for a blend. I'm using Iron Gate, Sapphire, Aquamarine, a mixed up kind of cream color that I created, and then light yellow. Those are all Chalk Mountain colors because that's the paint that I use. Um, at the very bottom on just the legs, I will do two coats of Iron Gate on those and they won't be a part of the blend at all. I know I've mentioned this before in previous videos, but I do like to, um, keep solid colors on places where it would typically be hard to blend so I know that I'm only going to have the legs a solid color and that just makes it easier and a cleaner finish in the end. So with the iron gate since it's already on the legs I know I'm not going to use a ton of it at the very bottom because it's going to be you know added on with the legs. So this will have the least amount of color. You do want to make sure that your brushes are damp before you start using them. The paint is 
pretty thick and the joint compound likes to absorb liquid. So you're gonna use a little more water than you typically would. If you like to use water, great. Um, if you're somebody that doesn't usually use water in their paint, you might wanna do it if you're gonna use the joint compound as a texture. So again, how I said I wasn't sure what I was gonna do with this piece, I almost still don't at this point. I'm just kind of playing it by ear. I went through my colors and I found those ones and I liked them. Um, and then you'll see as I go, so this is the cream color that I just had extra of from another piece that's uh, gonna be coming up. And I thought I wanted it on here, but as you'll see in my second coat, I decided to omit it just because I didn't like the way that it fit in with the blend. So it's actually going to work to my benefit to remove it because it will give me larger blending transitions. And then a lot of times I'll also use an extra brush to help me smoke out the blend and get things going together. Uh, I just, I didn't like the way that it was working here. So I didn't do that on this blend. Right there, that was me trying to use a clean brush to kind of blend the two colors together. Nope, didn't do it. I ended up not liking it, so I actually just used my brushes for each color and went back and forth with them. And I wasn't worried about contaminating paint. If you are, take your paint, put it in separate containers. Um, I'm not worried about that. I don't care if my paint has a slight different color from one thing to another. In most of my pieces, there's no way that anyone would be able to color match something anyways if I said, oh, I use this color because they're blended. I mean, it's nearly impossible to be able to get that exact finish fixed if they like bumped into something and put a chip or something like that and it would be incredibly hard. I couldn't give them a color combination. So I don't care if my paint gets a little contaminated between brush strokes. And it's so minimal anyways that it doesn't really, doesn't do much. Sorry, that was a bit of a, a bit of a speech there. Yeah, so now I'm starting with the light yellow and I can tell now as I'm looking, I'm just like, oh, I just, I don't like the way the aquamarine goes into the cream and then goes into the yellow. Cause I feel like the cream is very subtle and the yellow and aquamarine are bright. So I'm like, ah, oh, it's just, it's not my favorite. So had I ended with the cream, it would have been fine too, but I wanted this piece to be more like fairy tale whimsically. So you'll see, you'll see, we'll get there. I am trying to leave it on the blends a little bit longer because I did have somebody mention that they couldn't learn anything from one of my other videos because I go so fast with the blends. I just feel like most people are coming to my channel for ideas on things and not a ton of techniques because there's so many other people doing all the things. But I hope this helps somebody. So now I'm reattaching the legs because they have the two coats of iron gate and it just looks really clean because I got to paint up on all the edges and it doesn't hit any of the bottom. So it just made it a lot easier. So again, I'm starting out with water and this time I'm just going from the light yellow and we'll go directly into the aquamarine because again, I didn't like the cream color and it will give me a larger transition line, which is awesome. And see, it already looks happier. It's not even blended together yet and it's just already better. And I do, um, even though I'm using the two brushes back and forth, I keep one end because they're usually oval or something near that when I'm using it. Um, I'll keep one end at the bottom and one end at the top and then I don't switch them so that I can kind of keep the, you know, the top half, the light yellow and the bottom half aquamarine or whatever two colors I'm using. So this is the sapphire going into the aquamarine. Oh, it's just so pretty. I love it. It's like this super light purpley blue color. Delightful. And 
And as you can see with my blend, because this piece is curved, I try and work the blend into that. So if this was a flat fronted piece, I wouldn't come up in the middle, but because this has that, the two, you know, curved bits on it, I kind of made the blend follow along with that to emphasize that. I just love how well that blends in. It looks so stark and dark and then it just melts in. It's beautiful. Love it. So this part took me a day and a half. <laughs> this was uh, such a chore. So the top here had trim over the top of the fabric and each piece had about 50 million little like the really sharp antique furniture tacks. Yeah, that many, so many, took forever. May have arthritis now. But the actual padding inside was, while super old, in good condition and had no smells or anything like that. Um, it looks kind of crazy, but it was totally fine. And then I found this fabric after I had finished painting it. I just ran to Joanne's and was like, oh, I need fabric. And I didn't have any yet. So I ran in there and I actually initially had something else. And then I saw this and was like, that's it. It's just this really nice cream color floral with kind of silver woven in. Oh, it was just so nice and 40% off. So thanks Joanne's, that was awesome. I wanna say it was like $6.99 when I bought it. So this piece cost me $6.99, it's no longer free. But I did like the little um, tacks that it came with because they were just little tiny brass things. They were so cute. So I did put them in. I <laughs> took a break. This is the next day because it just took forever. So that's why my hair is different. It was just too many of those teeny tiny tacks. But I just went around the entire thing. I cut it to fit, folded under the edge so it looked neat and clean, and added those tiny brass tacks. And I thought it looked really, really nice. I didn't do any of the trim because I didn't think that it needed it. Okay, then I'm sealing this piece with burgundy wax. This is one that they were, um, Chalk Mountain, they were playing with. So I get to play with it and it's really exciting. So this is the burgundy. I'm not sure if you can purchase it yet, but it's lovely. And I chose to do this, not sealing it in clear first because I want it to absorb all this color and all the paints to kind of get a nice kind of tinted finish on it. So if you didn't want it to tint all of the paint, you would do clear first, and then it would still sit in all the cracks and crevices that you created with the texture, but it wouldn't tint the whole paint. But like I said, I sealed the whole piece with it, so my paint is tinted and lovely. So you let it sit on there for, you know, 40-ish minutes, two hours, however long, wipe it back, and then I let it sit overnight, and now I'm just buffing it in. And this will make sure that you don't have any excess wax. It doesn't have that, you know, greasy feeling left on there. It feels super nice and smooth. And now we get it at the top. So once I got this on, I felt like even though there's a lot going on with it, it just wasn't enough. I needed something else because of the shape of it and just 
I don't know, when I looked at it, it just looked like it was missing something. This is just me putting the chain back on. It was just a tiny little brad nail, like I said. So now it holds the top up. But yeah, I just thought it was missing something. So I went through and I grabbed some of my rub and buff because I thought silver was too light and black was obviously too dark. Mixed them together, made a little pewter, and then just added the stencil to it. And now I think it's perfect. I just, oh, so lovely. Hope you guys enjoyed this. So I typically like giving numbers for my pieces at the end of the videos. However, this one hasn't sold yet because Facebook Marketplace has been keeping my items in review and won't let them out. And I've been kind of messing with them and seeing how it goes. But if you'd like to know, ask later and I will update you on whether or not it's sold. So I hope you guys like, subscribe, all that jazz, and I'll see you next week.